Benjamin Co, for example, parodied the halal logo and placed it next to a pig's head. And those of us who are familiar with the sensitivity of the Muslim uh, community know that that is completely uh, insulting. He spewed vulgarity, vulgarities at the Muslim Malay community. He derided, mocked their customs and beliefs, and profaned their religion. He even compared their religion to Satanism. Nicholas Lim was less uh, inflammatory in his remarks. And I had the occasion uh, in that particular case to make reference to a couple of uh, approaches which the courts would adopt in dealing with racism. And I said this. I said that the offense of racism is mala per se. There is no mitigating factor in regard to such an offense. Especially the sensitivity of racial and religious issues in our multicultural society. Particularly given our history of the Maria Hatok incident in the 1950s and the July and September 1964 race riots, as well as the current domestic and international security climate. I went on to say that young Singaporeans, like the accused persons before the court then, may have short memories that race and religion are sensitive issues. They must realize that callous and reckless remarks on racial or religious subjects have the potential to cause social disorder in whatever medium or forum that they express. In this case, of course, it was the internet. And I laid down uh, some uh, principles in order to indicate where the red lines are in regard to uh, this particular area of racism. Now, arising from that particular case, I think a couple of other cases then uh, came about in which the courts had to deal with those cases quite, uh, quite sternly with that particular area. Now, this is within the context of what I had spoken earlier on about the expressions and the way that the expressions of racism have found its way into uh, this part uh, of the world. Let me uh, talk a little bit about our racial policies. I think Professor Ko made reference to a couple of uh, constitutional as well as administrative structures, the President, President Council of the Minority Rights, as well as the Inter-Religious Council. Singapore, Singapore places a very high, in fact, a very, national, very nationally high priority to combat discrimination on the grounds of race or religion. The core principles of meritocracy, secular government, multiculturalism, ensure that the government adopts an even-handed approach to all communities. We have got in place a matrix of uh, regulatory framework, government policies, as well as uh, administrative uh, mechanisms. This strong legal framework consists of the Maintenance of Religious Harmony Act, the Penal Code, the Sedition Act, uh, and the Public Order Act. And this act provides a framework to act as a deterrent to any group that attempt to cause racial or religious uh, conflict. And again, the President Council, Presidential Council for Minority Rights considers and reports on such matters affecting persons of any racial or religious community in Singapore that are referred to uh, the council by parliament or by the government. We also have in place several administrative measures. Uh, they complement the legislation and they are intended to create a conducive environment to encourage social harmony in Singapore. For instance, to prevent the formation of racial enclaves, we have what is known as the ethnic integration policy which ensures a balanced mix of the major ethnic communities in public housing estates. We also have the Community Engagement Program, which was launched in 2006. The National Steering Committee on Racial and Religious Harmony 
they all provide a platform for ethnic, religious, community, and government leaders to engage with one another to build a network of trust and formulate strategies to strengthen community interactions. The NSC, which is the National Steering Committee, also provides direction to the interracial and religious confidence circles to nurture similar networks of trust at the local level. Let me now move on to the third sub area, and that is the uh, attempt by ASEAN uh, to formulate an ASEAN Declaration of Human Rights. The work is in progress, and the, the ASEAN community established an ASEAN Declaration uh, as asked for the ASEAN Declaration of Human Rights to be established. And this is now currently being undertaken by the ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission of Human Rights. Uh, as Professor Koh had mentioned, one of the great lessons of the Holocaust is that if we have in place a mature um, matrix of human rights, which are minimum or common standards among ASEAN nations, we will ensure that issues like discrimination and racism will not rear its ugly head. Work is in progress at the moment, and we are confident that by the end of this year, we would see a draft, a draft of the ASEAN Declaration of Human Rights. Singapore is taking part in the drafting of the ASEAN Declaration of Human Rights uh, quite uh, actively. And uh, we are quite confident that this will uh, come to pass and there will be common consensus among the 10 uh, ASEAN states. Uh, just in conclusion, I had the opportunity to uh, meet up with the UN Special Rapporteur on racism and xenophobia when he came to Singapore uh, in uh, 2010, uh, as well as the UN Special Advisor uh, on the Prevention of Genocide. And uh, we had extensive discussions in regard to that. One of the things we discussed was how, uh, the, how is, what kind of framework or the importance of early warning mechanisms uh, that uh, we should be looking at in order to appreciate uh, the, the, um, the uh, policies, the laws that are being put into place, incidents, uh, encounters that may rise, that may give rise to racism as well as to genocide. Uh, I've been given only 15 minutes by Professor Ko, and I'll be happy to take questions after that. Thank you very much.